The concept of Japanese style survival horror games readily appealed to me when I found out about them during my teenage years. Sure, we have popular survival horror games made by Japanese developers, although I think people should be aware that Resident Evil and Silent Hill still have westernized cities. The real creepy stuff crawls from Japanese folklore, which centers heavily on paranormal activity or things relating to disturbing imagery like a human faced dog for example. There's a a giant slew of these games to choose from which embarks on the heavy use of undead spectral beings. A prime example of these games that you might be thinking of correlates to games like Siren or maybe even Fatal Frame just to name a few from memory. However, we're here to talk about the distinct lack of feudal horror games. It wasn't for a lack of these game developers trying either and I prepared a little bit for this video. One of the notable examples that involve feudal horror dates back all the way in the past when Sengoku Biohazard was in the works by Capcom. This was where the initial concept of feudal era Resident Evil was being tested. Onimusha retained many of these tank control fixed camera elements even after the game was finalized and shifted gears into adding more action into the mix. Logically, I think this shift made sense due to Samanosuke wielding a katana, but we'll speak more on that later. The things Capcom utilized with Onimusha horror elements still shine through. You can even encounter a nemesis like enemy in the form of a doll in the Gimma version of Onimusha on Xbox. The doll might not be a relentless pursuer, but the enemy is really hard to kill and the idea that a small doll with blades on their hands that could give you the business, it could send chills down your spine just thinking about it. The crimson blood drenched estate takes its time to establish the atmosphere incarnate, the strewn out signs of battle as you see soldiers that lost their lives at the temple rakes in the reality. The reality pertains to the idea that your comrades died painfully. Onimusha certainly still had the elements of a very creepy setting that meshed in deep with the environment. Remember how I talked about how the sword play could mitigate some of the survival horror scares after I alluded to the fact that Samonosuke's blade could keep him safe in a fixed camera game of this nature? I'm sure some people will say that if they were to make a feudal Japan game then you would have to do away with a skill swordsman. I think this premise is a tad misconstrued. Jill and Chris for example are skilled soldiers yet the knife isn't really vital against enemies unless you know what you're doing in Resident Evil 1 Remake, mostly for all the Resident Evils except for Co Veronica where the knife is kick ass. What I'm saying is, it's not about the tool and what it does, it's about how balanced it is within the confines of a survival horror experience. So if we wanted to use a sword that was good at a sword yet the enemies could overwhelm him that could be possible I played this game recently called Kuon that seemed to spark my itch for how a feudal Japanese game had sparks of life to it granted this game was not perfect by every means when I first picked it up and the navigation certainly wasn't the most definitive in every situation it's just something about the game that immediately grabbed my attention this was a game done by from software Software. I didn't even know that From Software even attempted to do a survival horror experience, which is something you don't see every day after they jumped on the Dark Souls bandwagon. I got the option to pick between two characters and I immediately got it popping. The game had all the proper callings of a classic survival horror on the PS2, a fixed camera, a sense of dread, and introducing these creatures that attacked you through the environment. Even getting glimpses of enemies I assume you encounter later as a ghost woman in a red kimono faded out in the distance. The combat focuses on hurling magic at your foe to ward them off, yet you cannot attack ghastly figures that are floating in midair in the building. I didn't know how to equip the fan on my character, but there is a melee option that seems to be the standard whack-a-mole until dead trope that you usually spot in most survival horror games. The pacing felt pretty solidified as well, even having those moment-to-moment -moment gameplay reactions between deciding how to solve a puzzle and running for your dear life.
life with six apparitions on your tail. I think introducing those urban legends in familiar Japanese inspired settings was a fantastic idea. Unless you're accustomed to the feudal horror films, then this stuff is unbeknownst to us. The magic system was probably implemented in Kuan to show that there is a bit of a fantasy element in the game, so I think that's pretty acceptable in my opinion. As long as you aren't getting crazy power ups that makes you a giant superhero, then limited scrolls would add to a sense of urgency in a feudal Japanese style horror game, especially if there's a capacity that you really have to manage. Survival horror is about capturing the essence of dread and low ammo count. Any action oriented flair would break the game and I think that needs to go in my opinion if they decide to go the route of capturing the essence with a feudal Japanese style horror game again. The only thing I really didn't feel fondly about when playing Kuan was the fact that I felt like the character I was playing did not die as much as she probably should have in normal difficulty. I don't know if the game was intentionally designed like this on purpose but I where my character's ass was like a tank that crashed through Fort Knox like butter. Gruesome deaths within the horror realm will give the player these foes to fight against that stand in their way as a looming threat, especially if they get a game over. These threats in feudal survival horror games should constantly hang over your head like a black cloud until you finally understand what it takes to survive. I think mostly in Kuan you're just running away from the apparitions, so maybe like some sort of chase system will work there. I also think that we need to see more intricate stories told in feudal Japanese lore. Everyone knows the deal for what I'm about to bring up every time this happens. 99.9% .9 of the time, every single feudal Japanese story, it always involves the lone swordsman against the world. It's either that or the fact that someone hates Nobunaga's guts all the time. I always thought it would be amazing to have a premise that that entices more originality or it could be a premise similar to Siren where they handle the ghosting system. The game will feature multiple protagonists if it was done by me and I think that everyone will have different roles. It would be these isolated incidents in my opinion. Whoever dies as the protagonist they can return as a ghost and they can stalk the new protagonist that you play until all of them are dead which can warrant a bad ending. I kind of like this connection to be honest and I'm surprised if a game hasn't already done this before I would be totally shocked and amazed because if you built up that attachment to a character for so long only for them to be killed off as the protagonist and then they come back as a creature it gives you like a sense of guilt like damn I got this guy killed and now what do I do and they could do some fourth wall breaking stuff anyway with like the dialogue and these creepy hymns saying that you caused this you caused me to die and now you're gonna pay for it. Just imagine something as sick and sinister as that. That would be absolutely crazy. I think the idea of finality, the end game, it could give like the game so many roles and characteristics to play with, especially with like each character having like a strength and a weakness. Strengths and weaknesses were absent for the longest time after RE1, Outbreak, and Resident Evil Zero. Why not give strengths and weaknesses a go here again? Make a Japanese painter, a game a salesman, a swordsman, a carpenter. Uh, these people could have a variety of defining factors. Maybe they could go in differing areas that other characters cannot go into because they lack the attributes to do so. That would be pretty sick, man. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, the most issues that like feudal horror have in the industry is that no one is taking a shot on them. No one is basically reigniting this genre, despite the fact that there was a long lull in the samurai inspired titles and then there was a big resurgence of them like we're having games like Ghost of Tsushima we're having games like Sekiro all these games are now coming out why not take the chance on another feudal horror inspired game
I don't get it. I just don't get it. I guess you can clearly say that um, most of the gap back then, it was filled with, like Samurai games were coming out, but they were filled with like Musou-like experiences, you know? I think developers, they really need to stop resting on their laurels here. This is right for the opportunity. It's not hard to understand why something is pretty much minuscule, you know? I get it. I understand that the more insane gunplay third person OTS is the more popular rage these days just give us something in that vein that is a bit more dynamic that is a bit more creepy with the camera angles they can make like dynamic camera angle samurai games no problem they just have to do them I, I think they could make something like Siren where it has stealth and stealth could make a great gameplay perspective and a survival horror game in some of those scenarios that I talked about earlier with the other characters. This setting could follow the Eastern devs trying to feature these creative creatures on screen and make our skin crawl with all the relevant things to their culture. Yes, yes, especially the long haired Seki girls that make our skin crawl from Ju on the Grudge. Not to mention, I think we're long overdue for another ghost tale anyway, and Japanese feudal beats are obvious. They they just create better jump scares than Western jump scares, which, I mean, they are loud, they are bombastic, they just lost their meaning. Hell, subtlety is key for horror, as well as the fear of the unknown, and a lot of people aren't really familiar with Japanese folklore. I think that would be great. I think that would be cool and if they did a game like this then they just need to take the ball and start rolling it since I'm pretty sure the samurai genre will be even more popular when Ghost of Tsushima rears its head and comes out this summer and then that advice more genres being created because samurai games will be all the rage again. Perfect opportunity. This is Renegade Operative signing off. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Yes, I have eclipsed 10 minutes. What do you guys think about the feudal Japan style survival horror games or the lack thereof? Do you think there needs to be more of these games? Can you explain your reasoning? Have you played Kuon and any other creepy samurai influence like survival horror games or have you played like anything else relating to Japanese style ghosts and folklore that people might not know about? Sound off in comments and let me know and once again take care people as i said be good people out here it's crazy corona is hitting and as always you know i care about all you subs stay safe once again i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you guys next time later